Yahweh bless you. We're going to begin our fellowship, and uh, we'll go ahead and hear from our Heavenly Father according to 1 Corinthians 14. So if anybody wants to speak in tongues, interpret, or prophesy, go ahead. My heart sings with joy when I see you stand together with my word. Yea, my heart sings with joy, knowing that my children are doing that which is good in my eyes. Shakudwa Masalukalis and a question at Tita Twire. Lamasunukulis and Machul, Lays in the Kuala Sane. Lamakoli, Shinikoli, Sane, Yotchatoi, Namalis in the Shitui. Lamakoli, Sinishi, Quire, Rino or a Sinakai. Should the most into Koi much Kuala Chi. My children, no matter what happens, no matter how bad you think your life is going, I will always be there. I will always be right next to you. All you have to do is reach out to me and speak to me. I can come for you. I can help you. I can build you up. My child, no matter what happens, I will always be there. No matter what bad things happen or how bad life's going, I am always there if you need me. Amen. My children. If you don't want to be by yourself and you're at your at your and you're at your house all alone and you're scared because you hear it always, my child, do not be scared. Do not feel alone, my child, because I am always with you. Everywhere you go, I will always be with you. So don't be scared of being alone, for you are never alone. For I am always by your side. My children. Any dead fish can float down a stream, but it takes a <coughs> but it takes a good strong fish to swim up the stream, my children. My children, if you read my word and if you preach and prophesy to me, then you'll be strong enough to swim up the stream. Anyone can float down the stream, but it takes a good, strong, wise person to be able to swim up the stream. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm a prophecy. <coughs> My children, know that you have one life to live. And you will never fully understand it until the resurrection. But I ask you just to trust me. Don't waste it. Don't squander your time. Don't chase after things that will disappear. The, the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the cares of the world. Because you'll really regret those things. I'm your father and I cherish you. And just, just as an earthly father and mother look at their children and, and tries to encourage them making wise decisions. So you know, I always do this to you until you go to sleep. So value and cherish every single heartbeat, every, every moment you have with your loved ones, and every moment you have, especially with me. How much time will you spend with me? How much will you read my word? And how much will you obey? And when, when you focus on your relationship that way, when I ask you to correct somebody, it'll be easy. Uh, but when you, it's when your eyes are focused on the people around you, it makes it more difficult to correct people so that you can help them. So keep your eyes focused on me, and you'll have the least amount of regret. I'll prophesy. <clears throat> Raise your arms up to me and, and rejoice. Hold your arms high and sing out to me that you, that you may be able to be replenished and uh, humble yourself down before me. That, that through through the rejoicing that, that you are will release things that uh, will increase your stature. Will it will will make you forget the things the the pains the the troubles and tribulations that you're going through uh, for do not drink of the cup of this world but know that the the water of life that i have for we, for you will sustain you and know that that as as things are trumping down behind you as you as you feel or hear things closing in on you to 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 not feel like you have to run from it but stop and open your spiritual eyes that you may be able to see that i will i will be there to defend Father, we thank you for those words through our Lord and Savior, Mashiach Yahushua. Our teaching, our sharing is going to be today is on Yahweh's changing his commands. <clears throat> we must understand that uh, we have to have a full knowledge of the full picture of the whole word of Yahweh, which most people don't. You know, there's no edu very little education whatsoever on the Old Testament. Most people live in the New Testament. So in order to understand, most people are Gentiles instead of Hebrews, and they got to realize all the prophets are Hebrews. Unless you can understand the Hebrews, you're not going to really get, you're going to get this book. 
So we're going to show you some changes that happened. And, and one was, and, and also we're going to see some things about Stephen being stoned by Paul. And that might not have been an unrighteous thing. And people go, how can you say this? Because we don't know the Old Testament. And so that's what we're going to start seeing a lot of these things that are happening. What people were going by was what that word is. And then when it changed, how do we know Yahweh changes it? And what's going to do to verify it? And we're usually going to see when it changes, it's going to be by signs and wonders. That when the person comes along, when things change, the law of Moses, it's because Peter was raising the dead and everybody else, and you have to say, okay. Uh, Christ didn't write this down, but we're going to follow Peter because of these signs and wonders that he has. But we're going to begin with swine, very simply, or hogs. Let's go to Genesis 9, 1 and 3. And you, you get into, you know, Islam and so the Jewish faith. You know, you can't eat swine. <coughs> Genesis 9, 1 to 3. But we're going to see beginning with uh, Noah. So also, what did people eat on the ark? Well, what did people eat? Because they were vegetarians. Everything was vegetarians. And so it's so obvious in here that you don't know the word. Uh, 9 uh, verse 1. So, yeah, so Elohim blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and let the fear of you and the dread of you be upon every living creature of the earth and upon every bird of the heavens over everything that moves along on the ground, over all the fish of the sea, fishes of the sea, into your hand have they been given. And as for every uh, moving thing that hath life, yours it shall be for food. Like the green herb have I given you all things. That begins, we can eat anything. So today, there are, there's many people too that still stay away from pork. But we know things change in Deuteronomy 14, page 2. Uh, 2.14, Deuteronomy 14.8. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. I'm sorry, Deuteronomy what? 14, verse 8. Page 213. There you go. And Esther, you want to read verse 8? Sure. Chapter 14, right? Yes. Okay. And the swine, because though he doth divide the hoof, yet he chooseth not the cut, unclean he is unto you. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcasses, their carcasses shall ye not touch. You can't even touch it. Well, that's going to explain some things with the hog farmers, when the, the guy who had legion and the man of Decapolis, who are these people, if they were even Jews, who had hogs or swine. But also, it's going to really explain to us uh, when uh, Peter was contacted. And that's Acts chapter 10. Something about the uh, prodigal son, too. Yeah, yeah, prodigal son, the swine. Acts chapter 10, verse 9. This is the revelation coming down to Peter. Now, we're talking about... Well, I don't know, a thousand years maybe? I don't know how long it was. Yeah, probably at least a thousand years, two thousand years. For the law of Moses, I forget what exactly what that was. Uh, nothing to do with swine whatsoever. But 9 through 16, uh, you want to read that, Elijah? Yeah. <clears throat> now on the morrow, as those men were journeying, and unto the city drawing near, Peter went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. But he came... But he became hungry and wished to eat. And while they were making ready, they came, there came unto, upon him a trance. And he beholdeth heaven opened, and coming down a kind of vessel like a large linen cloth, by its four corners being let down upon the earth, in which they were all the quadrupeds, quadrupeds and creepy things of earth and the birds of heaven. And there came a voice unto him, Rise, Peter, slay and eat. But Peter said, By no means, Lord, because at... At no time have I eaten anything common or unclean. And the voice came again a second time unto him, What things Elohim hath cleansed, be not thou making common. Now this took place thrice, and straightway was the vessel taken up into heaven. So we got to understand, this is a shock to him. And it's also talking about the Gentiles, but he also did clean it too, as we can see. He also what? 
we're also seeing is that it's all right to eat everything now, as we can see in First <laughs> Timothy. They did 4. it three times, which was yeah. But obviously, it was about Cornelius. But it's a two for truth, but you have to understand, people haven't had this. What, did Christ ever say you could eat swine? No. no. And so we have to realize, how can we make that jump? <laughs> you know, because this guy says mm -hmm. it. So now we go to 1 Timothy, and we're going to see in our particular age, but you're also seeing things change. And most people have an ignorance, and, and you know, I go to these Christian sites and I try to help them who are in India and different countries, and, and pork's bad, and you're, you just got to come up with these verses. But you have to be able to come up with the verses. So, 1 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. <coughs> and he's talking about different groups of people. Page uh, 215. Sorry. Forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from foods which, which Yahweh created to be received with thanksgiving by them who believe and personally know the truth. Because every creature of Yahweh is good and nothing be cast away. So now things have really changed. You know, lobster, uh, pork, all the things. Yeah, everything. Fish without scales. Yeah, if with, if, yeah, be catfish. If with thanksgiving it be received, for it is hollowed by the word of Yahweh at intercession. So things have changed, and we have to look at the whole picture. Now we go into circumcision. Now this is really big, too. Because we know in Acts later on, is people are saying you must be circumcised. Well, that's absolutely what a that Abraham did, mm -hmm. said. And that's going back to Genesis 17. And we're always Gentiles thinking that all those guys didn't know what they were doing. 17. We're going to see 9 and 14. And this is a very emphatic a law by Yahweh. And Elohim said unto Abraham, But as for me, my covenant must thou keep thou and thy seed after thee to their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep betwixt me and you, and thy seed after thee, to circumcise you every male. So shall you be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, so it shall become a sign of a covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised to you, every male in your generation. He that is born of the house, and he that is bought with silver, of any son of a stranger who is not of thy seed, he must surely be circumcised, born of thy house, or bought with thy silver, so shall my covenant be in your flesh for an age of body covenant. There it goes, age of body covenant. So there's been no end. <laughs> and as for the uncircumcised male who shall not be circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin, that person shall be cut off from among the people. My covenant hath he made void. Or now think of the, the Hebrews, Peter and all of them are talking to after, after Pentecost. And they're going to start saying, you don't have to be circumcised. This is the foundation of the scripture. It's an age of mighty covenant. Now, who are you to say this is the foundation? So in Acts 15, we're going to 4, see that. years of circumcision. Yeah. yeah. And so all of a sudden you have to say, nope. And we have people saying that today. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll come up and say homosexuals could be ministers now and everything because things have changed. But no. Acts what? Chapter 15, verse 1. Page 135. And certain persons coming down from Judea began to teach the brethren, except you be circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Well, that was what we were reading. Now we go to 19, and we're going to find out. Christ didn't give them revelation before they left. And really, I think so much of, it, of this truth is um, that the, the age of the Gentiles is never supposed to happen, which is us. And so they were supposed to go to Israel. Israel was supposed to repent. The, the book of Revelations would have come. And it, it would have been Jew all the way through. No sacred secret. Yeah, there's no sacred secret. But the Hebrews rejected, as a whole, they rejected the Messiah, so that's when the age of the sacred secret came in. Otherwise, Christ would have even known about it. He could have told them all the rules ahead of time to say, here's what's changing. But we know the apostles, they have to be able to say, okay, 
what are we going to do here? And we know Peter says, I was at the house of Cornelius, and, and all he said, what I've made, un what was unclean is now clean. So here's the new rules. Dad. Who's Cornelius? Well, that's another. Oh. Yeah, you should know who Cornelius is. He was is. a, a good, uh, yeah. Gentile. Oh. He was the first Gentile to receive the Holy Spirit and, and without being circumcised. Oh. And without water and, baptism. And, that's, and without water baptism, too. And that's a good illustration. You've got to be circumcised. So Peter has to say, wait a minute here. Cornelius spoke in tongues and was never circumcised in his whole household. And they were not water baptized either. So those are the acts to be able to say that I obviously circumcised has been replaced. And so at 19, wherefore I judge not uh, to be troubling them who from the nations are turning unto Wait, you. Wait, what verse? 19. 15, 15, verse oh, 19. I'm sorry, I thought we were yeah, 15, so, uh, 15, verse 19. Wherefore I judge not to be troubling them who from the nations are turning unto Yahweh. And nations are the, you know, non-Hebrews. But to write unto them, Here's your rules to abstain from the pollution of idols, and from fornication, and from what is strangled, and from blood. For Moses out of ancient generations hath in every city them who proclaim him, seeing that in the synagogues every Sabbath he is read. So here's the, here's the, uh, the instructions for the Gentiles. Now we know the circumcision becomes very interesting because in, in 16, verse 3, you know, Paul and Barnabas came down and discussed this thing. But in 16, chapter 16, verse 3, we're going to see the same, and we're talking about Timothy, the same would Paul have go forth with him and took and circumcised him on account of the Jews who were in their, those places, for they one and all knew that his father was a Greek. Well, wait a minute, this 15, they just said no circumcision. So what happened here? And so Paul, to the best of our understanding, realized it was not to please Yahweh, but to please men in order not to call it controversy. And now we go to Galatians 2, 3, but then another place. We're going to see just the opposite. So that gives us il illustrations to walk by the Spirit. There's exceptions. Galatians 2, verse 3. But not even Titus, who was with me, though he was a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. But this was because of the false brethren secretly introduced, who indeed came in secretly to spy our freedom, which we have in Christ Yahushua, that they might bring us into bondage. So he had Timothy circumcised, but Titus he did not have later on, did not have him circumcised. And then they come up to Peter. And we actually see in Acts, uh, or Galatians 5, 2, the whole book of Galatians about people going back to the law to get circumcised. <coughs> 2 through 5, 5, 2 through 4. Go ahead, uh, Melania. See, I, Paul, say unto you, if ye be getting circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. Yea, I, yea, I bear so um, witness again unto every man getting circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Ye have been set aside from Christ. Ye who by law are to be declared righteous, out of his favor ye have fallen. So we just stop there. So we see right here, if you are circumcised, Christ profits you nothing. Well, that's completely contrary to Genesis of Abraham. So people had to adjust to that. Now we go into the stoning of Stephen. And this is some insight on us. Let's go to Deuteronomy 17, page 216. Deuteronomy what? 17. See, we don't know about the Hebrew words. We've never been taught. We don't know about the Hebrew <clears throat> customs. We don't realize, love your neighbor as yourself in that time period were Hebrews. They weren't Gentiles. Your neighbor was your Hebrew. You didn't, you didn't associate with the Gentiles. You didn't live with the Gentiles. And so we don't even connect that at all. Or we were never taught that. 17, verse oh, 2. Hebrews and Shebrews. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, here's a, here's a rule. When ye shall be found in the midst where within any of thy gates, with Yahweh thy Elohim is given unto thee, man or woman, who doeth the thing which is wicked in the eyes of Yahweh thy God. Now think of what Stephen was doing. He's proclaiming Christ, right? <clears throat> By transgressing his covenant, yea, hath gone and served other gods and bowed down unto them, where, whether unto the sun or unto the moon or unto any host of the heavens which I have not commanded. And it shall be told thee that thou shalt hear and shalt inquire diligently. And lo, certain, a true certain is a report. This abominable thing hath been done in Israel. Then shalt thou bring forth that man or that woman who hath done this wicked thing within thy gates, the man or the woman, and shall stone him with stones that they die. Well, how easy it could have been to put Stephen into that position. That he's speaking blasphemy. He's talking that we don't need to do the law, possibly. That Jesus is the Messiah. And they end up stoning him. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is to die be put to death. And shall not be put to death at the mouth of, two, of one witness. And But now we go to uh, Acts 7. And, and it tells us a little bit about Paul. Or Saul, because he was part of this. Acts. Yeah, Acts seven. Now you have to understand, and this is going to be my hypothesis of why Stephen said, forgive them, they know not what they do, is because I think he spoke, he spoke too much. So he, he should have said certain things that he shouldn't have said, and he knows it. So he feels responsible of having that happening to him. Possibly. That's an assumption. Well, that's an assumption, because what people have utilized this particular thing is that all Christianity should say, forgive them, they know not what they do, and Yahweh's not doing that at all. There's going to be judgment for everybody. And who are you to tell Yahweh what to do? Right? Because all throughout the whole book is judgment according to your works. You're going to be judged according to your works. Now, if this person says, I'm, I don't want you to judge them according to their works, well, who are you to be able to do that? And that's why they have Christ saying this in the, in the, in the Gospels, which he never did say. It. So Christ never did say, Father, forgive them, they didn't know what they do. That was added later on. But let's look at this. When he starts saying this, ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Okay. That's not a real winner. When you start oh, talking to, oh, okay. to your crowd, ye stiff neck and uncircumcised in hearts and in ears, you always against the Holy Spirit, you strive as your fathers, you also, which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? Yea, they slew them who declared beforehand concerning the coming of the righteous one, of whom now you have become betrayers and murderers, who indeed received the law through ranks of messengers and guarded not. And yet while they were hearing these things, they were being pierced in their hearts and began gnashing with their teeth against him. But he, being already full of the Holy Spirit, looking steadfastly into heaven, saw the glory of Yahweh, and Yahushua standing on the right hand of Yahweh, and said... Lo, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of, of uh, Yahweh. And crying out with a loud voice, they held their ears, and rushed with one accord upon him, and thrusting him forth outside the city, proceeded to stone him. And the witnesses laid their garment at the feet of a young man named Saul, and they stoned Stephen as he was, invoke, as he was invoking and saying, Lord Yahushua, give welcome to the Spirit. <coughs> And kneeling down, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge against them this sin. And having said this, he fell asleep. And Saul was taking pleasure with them in his death. Okay, in there. Okay, we go look at Saul at one particular time. But in Timothy, we find out, 1 Timothy 1.13, page 214. He's going to give an explanation for this. Thirteen, okay, Isaiah. 
verse 13. Verse 13 of chapter chapter two, 1. Timothy, or chapter, or verse 13, okay. Yeah. First Timothy 1 Timothy 1.13. Okay. <coughs> and remember also, he was dragging men and women out of their houses, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why well, he thought he was doing the Hebrew, the Hebrew scriptures. And right here. 13. Through formerly a uh, defamer and persecutor and insulter, Nevertheless, mercy has shown me, because without knowledge, I act in unbelief. Right, okay, so he goes, without knowledge, I acted in unbelief. So he was held not guilty in those particular spots. Now we go into the Sabbath, Sabbath. And this is very important, too, because this is an age-abiding covenant. And we know, what, what is the Sabbath, Esther? Um, right, you guys know? Seventh day. No. Yeah, what, when's the seventh day? Sunday. No. Mm -hmm. Sunday's the Saturday. first day. Saturday. You guys don't know what the Sabbath is. I thought you would know this. So that's our fault. The Sabbath, when, 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 Jesus, <laughs> when Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, he, he started during the evening. Do you realize that? Oh. He says, an evening and morning, day one. Uh. Right? Evening and morning. He didn't say morning and evening, day one. He said evening and morning, day one. Right? Well, keep your hand here. Go to Genesis. We better do this. We have been <coughs> efficient. And which people don't understand this either. I'm trying to show people the Passover. Uh, <coughs> and I said he got up, you know, he was dead Wednesday and got up Saturday. And no, no, he died on Friday. And you no, know, 72 days or 72 <coughs> hours in the grave. Three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And let's just go uh, three. And Elohim said, light be, and light was. And he went. Genesis 1, 3. And Elohim saw that the light that was good. And Elohim divided the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness called it night. So it was what? Evening. 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 And it was more than one day. Okay, when does the day start? Evening. Yeah, which is sunset. So right now, this is the beginning of the day for Hebrews. The beginning of Thursday. Hmm. So, the Sabbath is, Sunday is the first day of the week. It's on our calendars too. It's the first day of the week. It's not the seventh day. It's, the Sabbath is Friday evening to Saturday evening. He didn't work. Friday <coughs> evening to Saturday evening. And then Saturday after sunset, that is the first day of the week. So say Saturday at 8 o'clock at night, that's the first day of the week. Sunday. Now, we're going to go into Sabbath. I guess Exodus. I guess I was Dr. Will will back point here. out, he said, because our day is now starting at midnight. So that, that shouldn't be too far. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Yeah, so our it's day at midnight, midnight in the middle of the night? Yeah, so. 12 a.m.? And, and we got to realize Yahweh's calendar is evening to morning and it's moons. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's, the, it's called the lunar calendar. Not the, not the solar calendar. And we say, well, that's a Hebrew calendar. Well, no, that's Yahweh's calendar. That's how he started everything. And let's go to Exodus 31. Genesis, Exodus 31, verse 16. 14. And so you have to give people a break. To understand, this is a very important thing here. The Sabbath. And it's called Sabbath which means to cease. It's not a day. When you say Sabbath, that means to cease. To cease what? To cease, to cease working. 31, verse 16. And uh, how about Izzy? You want to read 16 through 17? Therefore shall the sons of Israel keep the Sabbath by making it a day of rest to your generation as an age-abiding covenant. Between me and the sons of Israel, a sign it is unto times age abiding. For in six days did Yahweh make the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. So this is an age abiding, <clears throat> another age abiding covenant. And uh, that's also in Leviticus 24 8, but we don't have to go there. But then we go to Colossians 2 16. So I can really see when you have Seventh-day Adventists, 
And that's fine. And when, it, when is her Sabbath? Saturday. Saturday. But it's, it's still not a Sabbath. You know, so I mean, you're like, okay, so if you really want to do this, you go from Friday evening to Saturday evening. Colossians 2, verse 16. I have a client, 16. she does seventh day at Advance, but they, they do between the evenings. Pardon me? I have a client, they celebrate between the evenings, fr Friday do evening okay. and Saturday. Okay. But they would have their service on Friday evening. Yeah. What did you say, Colossians? Yeah, 2, 16. All right. Let no one therefore be judging you in eating and drinking or in respect of feast, which we know there are three required feasts of Moses. Or new moons, which was also a, a day, uh, or Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, whereas the body is of the Christ. So we see that now that has changed. I think there's something still very special about resting on some particular day, and that's trusting Yahweh. Uh, so, so we got to look at that concept. You know, that was from the beginning of time to our present. Uh, your, your servants rested, <coughs> employees rested, so I think it's a very the good idea with Hobby rested. Lobby. Pardon me? The land rested. Yeah, the land rested too. And so you're looking at all that, so I still, we don't have to be under at least the Levitical law, but that was before the Levitical law, but it is a, a concept that we've got to meditate upon. Right. Now the law of Moses, let's see if we got time, yeah. And this is especially the Levitical law. So Deuteronomy 26, Page 225. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. 26. Sixteen. And seventeen. Now you see right above there's a note up above there. A coveting of vows. And so Moses, bring down, here's the law. And are you going to do, make a covenant with it or not? Are you going to do it or not? This day is Yahweh thy Elohim commanding thee to do these statutes and their regulations. Thou shalt therefore observe and do them with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Thou hast a vow today that Yahweh shall be thy Elohim and that thou wilt walk in his ways and keep his statutes and his commandments and his regulations and, it, and will hearken unto his voice. Very simply, this is what a person was vowing to. So it's, it's more than the moral law, which we call the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words. Because these are statutes and commandments and regulations. So that's the whole Levitical law. But as we know, you go to Romans 7, 6, and so you can see the transition the Jews had to go through. When somebody says, we don't have to do the law of Moses. And this is the problem we have today, too, because people get confused when they say we're not underneath the law, but under grace, which they're acting, you know, which it's going to say that, but they've taken it out of context, which we will find out. Okay, 7 verse 6. What then shall we say? Is the law sin? Far be it. On the contrary, it had not discovered sin even through the law. For even a... Uh, wait a minute, you're right, right? Yep. 7 verse 6? Yeah, 7 verse 6. That's not... No, right. no, I'm, I'm, I was down to 7. 6. But now we have received full release from the law. There we go. We have received full release from the law by dying that where until we used to be held so that we should be doing service in newness of spirit and not... Op, op, Obsoleteness of letter. Obsoleteness of the letter. And people will say that. Okay, and I've had other people, you're not, we're not in a law, we're not in a law. And they really, they, it ends up becoming a license for the flesh. And, and that's, Andrew Womack is in this particular category, and other people too. Let's go to Romans 13, though. And honestly, it's easy to, to look at that way. And people can fornicate, they can do all sorts of stuff. And, you know, Andrew Womack says you're forgiven. When Christ died, your, your past, present, and future sins have all been forgiven. You don't have to ask for forgiveness anymore. They're all done. So, I mean, that just gives you a carte blanche to do whatever you want. But then they say, well, if you're going to do these evil things, you're not a Christian in the first place. So I can't open a brothel? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's just, you know, which we know that doesn't fit at all. But let's go to 13.8, so this helps us to 
prepare for this. Same, same book, Romans. Nothing to any be owing save to be loving one another. And most people, when they say loving, they're talking about a feeling. And that's not what a hob is. For he that loveth his neighbor hath given to the law its fulfillment. And here's what it is. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not commit murder, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet. Here's five of the Ten Commandments. I mean, they got four, but five. If there be any different commandment, and this word is summed up, namely, thou shalt ahab thy neighbor as thyself. Okay, so what is loving your neighbor as yourself? Doing the Ten Commandments. It just said right here, everything's fulfilled. All these commandments are filled by loving your neighbor. Okay, well, I don't murder my neighbor. I don't commit adultery with my neighbor's wife. I don't steal from my neighbor. I don't cover from my neighbor. Well, duh. See? Uh, love on, ten, love unto thy neighbor, worketh not ill, love's fullness thereof, or the law's fullness thereof is love. Let's see here. And it, uh, let's see here. We keep going. And this besides knowing the season, that is an hour ready for you, out of sleep to be awakened, uh, to be wakened, and that's egyro, so it shows you how the word's used. And now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, and the day hath drawn near. Let us cast off the works of darkness. And this is where people say, oh, I'm not underneath the law. Where we're casting off the works of darkness by loving our neighbor as thyself. Let us put on the armor of light as in daytime, becoming to us, becomingly, let us walk. Not in reveling and in drunken bouts. Not in chambering and in wanton deeds. Not in strife and envy. But put you on the Lord Yahushua Mashiach, and for the flesh that <coughs> not for God to fulfill its covenants. So, of course, we do the Ten Commandments, you know, and we love our neighbor as ourselves. And when, <coughs> and when it's not specifically written, uh, we can know whether Yahweh would approve that or not. You know, should I take heroin or not? Hmm. Well, it's legal now. Let's say it's legal. Well, I don't think so. I think that's really a bad thing. Well, it doesn't say you, you can't take heroin. You can't, you, it doesn't say you can't smoke pot. It, doesn't, it says you can't get drunk. And so we, all we got to do is, and I was a great premise that I usually use, is can I speak the word or what does not, <clears throat> where it does not affect my mind, where I can witness to somebody else. And if I can't, then I shouldn't do it. Now, if somebody in medical problems, then obviously those drugs are very good for painkillers. So that's <coughs> it. Now, I think we've got a little more time. And this is an important thing when we get into the, the whole book, the whole story from front to beginning is Matthew 22. Twenty-two, verse thirty-four. Two forty. And Esther, you want to read this or Isaiah? Wait, what chapter again? Chapter twenty-two, thirty-four through forty. And they're called the greatest commandment. Thirty-four. Oh. Matthew, page twenty-five. Page twenty-five. <clears throat> Not bad. What verse is it again? 34 30. to 40. 34 to 30. Now the Pharisees. Now the Pharisees hearing that he had silenced the Sadducees, were brought together with one accord, and one from among them, the Lord proposed a question, putting him to the test. Teacher, which commandment is greatest in the law? He said to him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the great and first commandment. The second like it is this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. In these two commandments, all the law is contained in the prophets. Very simple life. So these are our two laws. But in the Hebrew, things change. So in the emphasis, and that's what we, we don't have right now um, in our Bibles, is something called the Hebrew perfect and imperfect on their verbs. So let's just go to Deuteronomy, which he quoted. Uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. 
Oh, no, you don't even have to go there. I'm just going to read it to you. So they're in the perfect. So Hebrew doesn't have a future tense, and they don't have tenses. It's either complete or it's not complete. It's either complete or incomplete. So when, when Yahweh is telling somebody to do something in the future and puts it in the complete stage, then that's in the perfect stage. That means there's no fudge. Yeah, would you mind repeating that? Yeah, so Hebrew doesn't have a past, present, and future. It has either complete or incomplete. It's called <coughs> imperfect or perfect. Imperfect means it hasn't finished. It's not completely done. So that's also the present, is imperfect. And in the future, because the future is not finished either. And so the past is complete. Yeah, it makes sense. But in the future, he's going to do things that and put it in the perfect. And that's for emphasis to say, this is future, but guess what? It will happen. It will happen because you're going to make it happen. Oh. And that's the same situation where, where you know, a sergeant would come up to you and, and he says, uh, claim my Jeep, and you would say, it is done. Sir. Sir. <laughs> and that means emphatically that, all right, I'll get Don't to it, it sir. Yeah. I'll do it. I, it is done. Is it done? No, it's not done. But by that, stating that, it is. And, and on these two commandments, they're very emphatic. And one other thing is very interesting. On the Ten Commandments, you know, okay. where it says, I am Yahweh thy God, thou shalt not... That, Thou shalt not means thou hath no other gods besides me. It's the only one of the ten that's in the perfect. Oh. And what did Christianity do? Two more. More. They had two more gods yeah. on the first commandment. Very simply. But here is he, uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4, according to Young's, and Young's is about the only place you're going to see this, and you can verify Young's by, by our softwares, and it will say it's in the perfect. Hero Israel, Yahweh our Elohim is one Yahweh. Thou hast loved Yah thou hath loved Yahweh thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. And these words which I am commanding thee today have been on thy heart. And thou hast repeated them to thy son. Now this is really good, especially with raising children. Yeah. Wait a minute. Thou hast repeated them to thy sons. I didn't do that. Thou hast, is, is there an option there? Thou hast repeated unto thy sons, and spoken of them in thy sitting in thy house, and thy walking in the way, and thy lying down, and thy rising up, and hath bound them, and hath bound them as signs upon thy hand, and they have been for frontless between thy eyes, and thou hast written them on the doorposts of thy house, and on thy gates. I just had a big controversy with two Christian leaders in Wichita. And I say, you don't even have Republican bumper stickers or Christ bumper stickers on your car. Well, we don't need I don't do bumper stickers. And I thought, isn't that interesting? I would not put a Christian bumper sticker on my car <coughs> for whatever reason to advertise Christ. I would not put a scripture on my car to advertise Christ. Or I would not show people that I am a Republican. And I have to say, whose interest is that serving? Yahweh's? The Republican Party or you? And so here it is. Thou hast written them on the doorposts of thy house and on thy gates. What? These words. Yeah. These words are everywhere, everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I don't think it's really that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The forehead, and that's what it says, and on thy hands. And so it was everywhere. And we have to say, ah, give me some break here. That's fine. But when, you, when we're going to meet Christ, we're going to be very same. Were you one of my biggest fans? Oh, yeah. Let me take a look at your stuff. I don't see anything with me on here. Well, I'm your biggest fan. You know, he knows our hearts. You know, Yahweh knows our hearts. We should be fanatics. I can know uh, uh, a Denver Broncos fan, can I? You see, they got stuff all over them. Like you got a Christian shirt on you right there, too, so that's good. And that's what we need. Here's religious freedom, too, and that's good stuff. So we've got to realize this is very serious stuff. Now, the next one, loving thy neighbor, is Leviticus 19:18. Thou dost not take vengeance, nor watch the sons of thy people, and thou hast had love to thy neighbor as, as thyself. I am Yahweh. 
Look at that. And thou hast had loved. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. It is thou hast had loved thy neighbor. You know? It's a done thing. We have right yeah. now a homosexual running the Sedgwick County uh, Republican, yes, Party. Republican Party. A homosexual, which I had no idea until we just noticed this. A homosexual and the Republicans... Proclaimed. That, yeah, proclaimed. Yeah, an unrepentant homosexual who came out and they nominated him and he was also the intern of Ron and Susan Estes. What the heck is going on here? When, you know, and, and so we know him. He's giving prayers. They asked him to give prayers at the Pachyderm Club. I didn't know he was a homosexual until yesterday, last night. And guess what? I have written all the people, including him, telling him the consequences of homosexuality. You know, what Yahweh says, guess what? Uh, you're not going to inherit the kingdom, and you're going to be thrown in the lake of fire. All right? Now, carry on, or come, re repent of what that wickedness. Plus, here's all the diseases you're going to get. And so here's the doctor's report on all the diseases that are done by each 25 years old, 24 years old. And people are silently doing nothing, you know, which Aaron and I will do something. Okay, that's the point, is to get involved and realize if I got paid for advertising for Christ, I mean, really simple, here it is, <clears throat> Christian people. Now, would Donald Trump want a bumper sticker on your car or not? Absolutely. I mean, is, is this really a hard question? And on your truck, I've got uh, uh, truck bumper stickers. Okay, sure. I mean, this guy's dying for us. Yeah. He's getting beat up every day of his life. He's sacrificing his, his wife, family, his, his kids, wife, his kids. Yeah. And I, and Rob Rotola from Word of Life says, I don't do bumper stickers, LOL. Can you imagine that? Not a Republican. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, so, we'll be called on these things. So, very simply, we'll be called out on these things. And like I said, I go into parking lots and I say, look at the license plate. In God we trust? No, 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 no. I see a lot and, of and I, I, Well, but you go into a church parking lot I'm talking about. You're just go into in the Pathway Church and start looking at everybody's car. Is there any way I would know this is a Christian? And I thought, what a great avenue to advertise Republicans and Christians at the same time. You know, to say that's a Republican and a Christian. Yeah. And it's free, you know. But, and we have people at the back of our club who will not do it. I might get my car keyed or something. I got a lot of Mexicans in my area. So terrorism have, have stopped them from doing what they thought. What would this person been like in the Revolutionary War? Oh, yeah, I'm really going to lean on him because I, my car might get something happen to it. <laughs> but, okay, I digress. I'll go ahead and we'll close. And I'll have a prophecy for people, but it's up to stand for righteousness. Well, Father, we thank you for these words through Christ our Lord. As you begin each day and as you meditate upon my word, which is words of life, and, and, and these words of life will manifest in your life as you do them. You must put them into motion for them to generate energy and strength and power. So speak forth my word and meditate upon my word each day. Spend your time in that so you can become light, which my word will make you. Amen. See you next week. I was thinking about...